So I will be talking about our work, Cosmo, uh, which is an efficient method to model caches to understand the effects on performance of varying the cache's size and its eviction policy. So in-memory caches, such as Redis or Memcached or many other application-level in-memory caches, are ubiquitous with high-performance computing. Any, any application that uses more than, or has more than a handful of users is going to use one of these applications to not only serve data faster with lower latency, though also reduce the load on the backend data stores. Unfortunately, these caches use expensive memory resources, and thus it's important to model the caches to pro properly understand their uh, configuration sizes. If you make the cache too small, you get poor performance, in, resulting in higher miss ratios. If you make the cache too large, although you'll get better performance, you could be wasting uh, valuable memory resources, resulting in higher costs of operating the cache. Furthermore, these caches' workloads change dr drastically, dynamically over time. Therefore, this modeling technique must be done dynamically to reflect these changes. Caches such as Redis and Memcached or other application level caches have the added benefit of being able to be configured and reconfigured real time uh, for both the configured size or eviction policy. Furthermore, any modeling technique that's done must be efficient because if it's done on the same server as the cache itself, any resources that it's using is being taken away from the cache. So the best tool to model, and really the only tool uh, that models the trade-off between cache size and miss ratio, and thus performance, uh, is the miss ratio curve, or MRC. The miss ratio curve plots cache size on the x-axis with miss ratio, the corresponding miss ratio on the y-axis. And as you'd expect, as you increase the cache size, you get a reduced miss ratio, and thus better performance. Though MRCs also have interesting regions, such as cliffs and plateaus. Cliffs are regions where a small change, a small increase or decrease in the cache's configured size will lead to a large increase or decrease in the performance of the cache. As such, if you're on configured to the left side of a cliff, it makes sense that with a small increase and a small increase in your cost and a small increase in your cache size, you'll get a big win in cache performance. Plateaus or flat levels on the MRC are also interesting because any cache size configured on a plateau, if you increase or decrease its cache size, will have the exact same performance. As such, if you are configured with a cache somewhere on a plateau, you can move it to the leftmost point on the plateau and notice no performance degradation uh, with, with cost savings. Now, for caches like Redis and Memcached and pretty much any or very, most of the application level uh, caches, LRU has kind of become the de facto standard that everyone implements and uses. And in, in many senses, it becomes the default when you start up one of these caches. However, many other policies exist, and in fact, they're being introduced every year. Things like LFU, or at least recently used, um, which has been shown to perform well under zip fee and workloads. Or FIFO, first in, first out, uh, which performs really well on read-heavy workloads. And then 2Q and the, and the recently introduced S3 FIFO perform very well when you have scanning patterns on caches. And many other policies exist. But the question is, which one of these do we use? We have these rules of thumb as to which policy is good for which workload, but for real-time operations, where very little is known, very little knowledge is known about the access trace while it's happening, it's difficult to come up with these rules of thumb and to pick an eviction policy that you're going to use. On the right here, we can see MRCs generated for multiple eviction policies, namely LRU, LFU, 2Q, and S3 FIFO. And we can see for this workload, S3 FIFO seems to be outperforming with a lower miss ratio than all the other policies for the majority of cache sizes. However, interestingly, it's not really a one-size-fits-all solution. For cache sizes larger than roughly 66, 67 gigabytes, S3 FIFO is actually superseded by LRU and LFU in terms of performance. So there really isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. Furthermore, workloads change drastically over time. For a certain period of time on the same workload, LFU might be the best uh, eviction policy, while in the same workload, another period of time, it might switch to S3 FIFO. So having this real-time reconfigurable uh, model is, is vitally important. But how do we generate these MRCs? Well, luckily, many MRC generation algorithms already exist. And this dates back to the 1970s with Matson's seminal work. Many policies have been, or many models have been introduced that can generate exact 100% accurate MRCs in a single pass. And namely, these are three examples of which are, are seen on the top of this chart. Since then, to reduce the computational overhead, or, or overhead in general of generating these MRCs, because they can get quite expensive for larger workloads, many approximate uh, MRC generation algorithms have been introduced since then. 
The problem here is that all, the vast majority, essentially all but one of these policies are, operate only on the LRU eviction policy. Right now, miniature simulations, or mini-sim, which we'll, we'll discuss, uh, is the only one that can generate for policies that are non-LRU. And how does it do this? Well, Minisim performs many individual simulations of a cache, each independent of one another, and each simulation is configured to a varying size. The simulations are all fed the same uh, access stream, and the resulting miss ratios are then plotted into what we call the miss ratio curve, or MRC. To reduce the overhead of performing full simulations, a number of full simulations of the cache, Minisim employs a sampling technique known as shards to spatially sample the accesses and therefore produce these uh, MRCs using only a subset of the total accesses. It's important to note that all of this is for one eviction policy. The same process is performed for every single eviction policy um, that you want to generate an MRC for. As such, Minisim has a few limitations, the first being its high memory usage. On the right here, we can see that because these caches, these simulated caches within Minisim, do not share any of their internal data structures or the objects that they've allocated within the cache, you can get the same object existing in multiple of these caches, both for one uh, eviction policy as well as multiple eviction policies as well. Furthermore, and we've also measured this um, memory usage on the left here, using 52 publicly accessible real-world access traces comprising of roughly 126 billion total accesses, um, where we fed all of these and generated an MRC for four different eviction policies, then measured the high watermark of how much memory it took Minisim to generate these MRCs. Ultimately, we noticed that in the extreme case, it can take upwards of three gigabytes to generate one MRC for one eviction policy. Now, if you're doing this in real time, three gigabytes for one uh, eviction policy multiplied by however many eviction policies that you want to operate on begins to add up. Furthermore, Minisim requires some specification of configuration parameters prior to the uh, running of the access, access trace. Things like the number of caches you want to simulate or the range of cache sizes you want to simulate have to be specified ahead of time. Now, this is especially difficult when you don't have any prior knowledge of the access trace itself. As such, Cosmo hopes to address these ideas. Whereas Minisim does not share data between the individual simulated caches, and thus may have duplicate objects uh, existing in many of the caches, Cosmo maintains one shared copy of all objects that it sees, shared amongst all the simulated caches. Second, and most important, because Minisim is essentially performing full simulations of a cache, these caches' lifetimes have to exist throughout the duration of the cache that it's modeling itself. As such, any memory that they've allocated and they've consumed, they're essentially hoarding for the entire duration of the cache's lifetime. Cosmo, on the other hand, uses its one shared copy of objects to reconstruct dynamically any cache stacks that it needs to construct and then freeze the memory when it doesn't need it and freeze it back to the operating system to be used by other applications later on. But really the question comes, how do we do that? With one shared copy of, of objects, how do we reconstruct a cache size of a specific size? Well, given a cache size that we want to reconstruct, we iterate through all the objects that Cosmo has stored and we determine two things. The first thing being, does it exist in this cache? And the second, if it does exist, where is it in the cache's stack? Now, as with many things, this is best demonstrated with an example, and we're gonna be uh, using LRU as an example. I have to preface that you wouldn't actually use Cosmo to generate MRCs for an LRU, the LRU eviction policy, because as I've mentioned, a plethora of other options are available that generate L uh, MRC specifically for LRU. But for the purposes of this example, I'll be describing it for LRU. So given an object, how do we position, how do we determine its position within an LRU stack? Here we have an object O with the last access time of five. Well, if the stack size is infinite, it becomes very simple. No evictions have occurred in the past. The objects are all sorted from most recently used to least recently used based on their last access times. And O is just slotted in where it exists, where it needs to exist relative to the other last access times. But a problem really arises when we limit the stack size. If we want to reconstruct a cache of stack size, let's say four, how do we know where O is positioned in this cache? And really the question becomes, does O even exist in this cache size? The answer is, well, we need more data. As such, we introduce Cosmo's novel uh, data structure, the eviction map. Each object that Cosmo stores has its own associated eviction map. 
And an eviction map is essentially just a series of eviction records that record from which cache sizes this object has been evicted from in the past. Using this data, we can see that object O has been evicted from cache sizes 1, 2, and 3 in the past. And therefore, it's never been evicted from cache size of 4 and exists. We then insert it into the cache size uh, of 4 according to its last access times relative to the other objects that exist in this cache. Now, as you might expect, eviction maps are policy specific. The, the data that they hold is implemented on a per policy basis. For LRU, it's simply just which caches have this, has this object been evicted from in the past. For LFU, for example, it's which cache sizes has it been evicted from and what was the frequency counter when this eviction occurred. Now, using these two pieces of information, I'm able to generate, or for LFU, I'm able to reconstruct the stack of any LFU cache size that I want for any object. Now, given all the objects that Cosmo has stored and each object has its associated eviction map for any eviction policy that we implement, we're able to not only reconstruct the stack of any cache size, we're able to reconstruct the cache of any cache size for any eviction policy that we have an eviction map implemented for. The key benefit here is because we have the flexibility of changing the size of this, uh, this simulated cache, we do no longer need to have prior specification of the range of cache sizes or even the number of caches that we want to simulate to generate this MRC. But you might be asking yourself, well, these eviction maps seem pretty important. Where, where do we get these eviction records from? Well, we note that on each access, evictions may occur in some subset of the caches that we're simulating. But our eviction maps need to remain up to date to reflect all these evictions. Well, Cosmo handles this in a series of steps that we'll outline with another example. So here we have Cosmo that has four stored objects, A, B, C, and D, each with its own associated eviction map. And B is being accessed. So the first thing Cosmo does is it searches for all the cache sizes in which B does not currently exist. Well, this is trivially done, trivially, trivially done uh, using B's eviction map by simply searching for all the cache sizes in which B has been evicted from. Once we do that, we simply reconstruct these, the stacks of these cache sizes. Here we can see that B did not exist in cache sizes of 1 and 2, so we reconstruct their stacks. Now once B is accessed, it must thereafter exist in all cache sizes. So what we do next is introduce B into these caches. By introducing B into these caches in which it did not exist before, we may evict another object. Here we can see that we pushed B into the stack, though object C now has gotten evicted from these caches to reflect that, that newly added entry. Well, to, to hold this or to understand this eviction, we simply add these evictions to C's eviction map and then repeat this process for the next eviction, knowing that our eviction records are now up to date. But you might be looking at this thinking, well, there's a few optimization nightmares here. The first one being, Storing an eviction record for every eviction that happened for every object can be costly. You might have access traces with billions of unique accesses, and if you're storing an eviction record for every object's every eviction, you're talking about billions of evictions. Well, we employ what we call eviction record pruning. And if we take a look back at our previous example of object O with three uh, eviction records, namely evictions from objects, evictions from cache sizes one, two, and three, we can notice that a lot of these eviction records are actually showing redundant data. Here, this object's been evicted from cache sizes 1, 2, and 3, but if it's been evicted from a cache size of 3, inherently it must be evicted from smaller caches as well. As such, we can just eliminate and prune those cache sizes out of its eviction record, keeping these records really small. Experimentally, we found that this was extremely beneficial in keeping our eviction records relatively small. Here on the y-axis, we can see the average number of eviction records held on all the objects uh, that Cosmo stored. On the x-axis, we can see that it's essentially time or access count throughout an access trace. The blue solid line here is without pruning, and the red dashed line is with pruning. Overall, we noticed a roughly 387 times reduction in the average size of eviction wrap um, for the average object stored by Cosmo. Not only does this reduce the memory usage of Cosmo by keeping the eviction records small or eviction maps small, it also reduces the overhead of having to search through these eviction records when determining which objects exist and what cache sizes and which don't. Another problem is on every access, we have to reconstruct all the cache sizes in which this object does not exist. Now, 
this object may not exist from, you know, if at a byte level granularity, billions of different cache sizes. It's infeasible to reconstruct all of these uh, every time. As such, we introduce a granularity parameter. We reduce the number of reconstructed stacks to a configurable value, which is our granularity parameter. But really, this is a performance and accuracy trade-off. Here we can see we've limited this. Uh, uh, the graph at the bottom shows the number of reconstructed caches that we perform on each access relative to the accuracy, which we show as the MAE, or mean absolute error of the generated MRC relative to the fully accurate MRC. We can see that with roughly five or 10 uh, simulated caches, a limit of five or 10 simulated caches on each access, Cosmo is able to achieve a, a, an average MAE well below 2%, which is uh, relatively accurate. Interestingly, with only one simulated cache, Cosmo is still able to get a median MAE under 5%. Now, although 5% is, is a relatively high error, it's still interesting that this is all just with one simulated cache. The last problem I'll talk about is Cosmo needs to have a reference to all objects it's ever seen, all unique objects it's ever seen. And the number of unique objects can grow quite large. To solve this, we employ the same uh, technique done by mini simulations in that we use the shard sampling method to reduce the number of stored objects to a small constant um, that we can configure. We've noticed that this reduces our overhead by a factor of over 1,000. Now, this is both the memory overhead of storing these objects as well as the compute overhead of regenerating stacks because we need to iterate through all objects that we have stored. So finally, how does Cosmo compare to Minisim? Well, I showed Minisim's memory usage in the past. Um, but Cosmo's memory usage, noting that here we're, ge we're generating MRCs with the exact same 52 access traces, 126 billion uh, total accesses, and measuring the high watermarks of both Cosmo and Minisim, we can see that Cosmo uses significantly less memory, noting the logarithmic scale here. Overall, we saw that Cosmo, amongst all eviction policies and all access traces, was roughly 3.6 times less memory than mini simulations, up to 36 times in the extreme case. One important note here is that any memory used by Minisim or Cosmo to generate an MRC for LFU or FIFO or 2Q or any eviction policy has to be summed if you're generating these, eviction, these MRCs for eviction policies in parallel in real time. So a memory usage of one gig or two gigs doesn't seem like a lot, but it does seem like a lot when you're generating it for 10 different eviction policies all at once. It begins to add up. In conclusion, currently modeling any non-LRU eviction policy requires either Cosmo or mini simulations. The overhead of this MRC generation is important, both in terms of computed memory usage, especially if the model is running on the same physical server as the cache itself, as any resources consumed by the model are taken away from the cache. As such, Cosmo has significantly less memory or footprint than Minisim. Finally, Cosmo re removes the need for prior specification of configuration parameters um, as it's able to reconstruct dynamically any cache size for any eviction policy it needs during runtime. Thank you, I'm available for any questions.